This video is for reviewing how to prove something as a parallelogram using coordinate geometry proofs. In a coordinate geometry proof, you'll be given the vertices of the quadrilateral, and you're going to need to use one of the three formulas, or two, or multiple ones, um, in order to figure out if it's a parallelogram, a trapezoid, or one of the special forms of parallelograms. Proving something's a parallelogram is also the first step in proving something as a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. Now, we're going to go through four methods for proving something as a parallelogram, but you don't have to do all of these every time you want to do one of these proofs. Um, you just will be choosing one, but the, depending on the information you're given, will be determining which method you want to use. The first way we're going to look at is using the definition of parallelogram, or showing that there is two sets of opposite parallel sides. In order to show things are parallel, I'm going to have to use slope formula, but before I do that, I want to label my parallelogram so I know what my sides are. Whenever a parallelogram is given to you, like this one, A, B, C, D, your sides, wherever you start from labeling, here I'm going to start with A, always move around in a circular motion, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So I will have A, B, C, D. Don't make the mistake of jumping around and labeling opposite vertices AB. You want to definitely go clockwise or counterclockwise around the sheet. Okay, so how do we actually prove this is a parallelogram? Well, in this case, I'm going to be using the definition, so I need slope. And in order to calculate each of these slopes, I'm going to need to know the change in Y over the change in X for each of these sides. So my first slope, I get my change in Y, which is 5, over my change in X, which is 10, which reduces to 1 half. For my second slope, my change in y is 2, my change in x is 11. For the third one, my change in y is negative 5, my change in x is negative 10, which reduces again to 1 half. And for AD, I get my change in y is 2 over 11. Now I'm going to make the observation that the slope of AB and the slope of CD are both 1 half which would mean that they are parallel, since they have equivalent slopes. And the same thing is true for the slope of BC and the slope of AD. They have equivalent slopes as well. Once I've made that observation, I'm going to formulate a conclusion based on my work. And in this case, I'm going to say that since the slopes of are equivalent, segment AB is parallel to CD, and BC is parallel to AD. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram because it has two sets of opposite sides. I'm using this definition of parallelogram to make that conclusion. That's it. We have just proved this, that this is a parallelogram. Here's a different example. Only now, instead of using slopes and proving that opposite sides are parallel, I'm going to use the theorem that if a quadrilateral has two sets of opposite sides being congruent, then it's a parallelogram. So if my opposite sides are congruent or have the same measure, they will form a quadrilateral. So, let me also label this one, starting with my point A, and then moving around my shape B, C, D. It does not matter which direction you move, as long as you move in that direction consistently around the entire shape to label. So, if I'm going to be showing congruent, I'm going to have to show that uh, distances are the same, or the lengths are the same. So, I'm going to use distance formula for this. And for my distance formula, I will need to know changes in Y's and changes in X's. So once I plug all this information in, the length AB will be the change in X squared, so negative 2 squared, plus the change in Y squared, which turns out to be 4 plus 9, or the square root of 13. I'm going to do the same thing for side BC, CD, and AD. Plugging in all this information, change in X, change in Y, 36 plus 1 is 37. Change in X. Change in Y. Again, 13. And change in X. Change in Y. Again, 37. Now, I should note that once you have the square root, you should reduce it. However, since 37 and 13 are both prime numbers, these square roots will not reduce. I'm going to make the observation that the length of side AB and the length of side CD are the same, and the length of side BC 
and the length of side A to here the same. That means that opposite sides have the same measure, or they are congruent. So my conclusion will be, since the lengths are equivalent, AB must be congruent to CD, and BC must be congruent to AD. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram because it has two sets of opposite congruent sides. Okay, method number three. If a quadrilateral has one set of parallel congruent sides, then it's a parallelogram. So now I'm only looking at one set of opposite sides being congruent and parallel. Again, I can label my sides A, B, C, D. I'm going to prove that only one set of these sides are opposite, or one set of these opposite sides are parallel and congruent. For parallel, I'll need slope. For congruence, I'll need distance. So I'm going to look again at the change in y's and change in x's. My slope for change in y is 5 over my change in x, 10, gives us the 1 half for AB. My slope for CD, change in y, negative 5, change in x, negative 10. So again, my slope is 1 half. So now I'm going to conclude that since my slopes of AB and CD are equivalent, AB must be parallel to CD. In order to show that it's a parallelogram, I also have to show that they are congruent. So I'm going to do that with distance formula. I get the square root of change in x squared plus this change in y squared. This would be the square root of 125, which reduces to 5 square root of 5. That's my distance AB. My distance CD, square root of change in x squared, negative 10, plus change in y, negative 5 squared. Again, gives me square root of 125, which again, CD reduces to 5 square root of 5. Since those distances are the same, I can make the conclusion that these sides are equal. So since A, B, and C, D are equal or congruent, and A, B is parallel to C, D, the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. This is a complete proof to show that it is a parallelogram. And now we're going to look at the fourth method, which is if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. So again, I'm going to start by labeling my sketch of this figure, going consistently around in one direction when I'm labeling. And then I can see more clearly that my diagonals are actually AC and BD. Now my goal is to show that these bisect each other, which means cut each other into congruent parts. And if they do that, then these two lines would share a midpoint. So the formula I'm going to use, midpoint formula which is the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So the midpoint of AC would equal the average of my x's, which is 1 plus 22 over 2, and my average of the y's, negative 1 plus 6 over 2, which reduces to 23 over 2 and 5 over 2. I'm going to repeat the exact same process for diagonal BT. I have 11 plus 12 over 2, 4 plus 1 over 2, which reduces again to 23 over 2, and 5 over 2. Noticing that these two midpoints are the same, I can make my conclusion that since the midpoints of the diagonals are equivalent, ABCD is in fact a parallelogram. Each of these methods for proving something's a parallelogram could either be used just to show that it's straight, a parallelogram, or could be the first step in a proof of this quadrilateral being a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square.